Music has been an integral part of the human experience as long as humanity has been around. And uh, I think it's uh, intuitively been felt for a long time that uh, music can have healing properties. This is, I think, pretty safe to say, uh, certainly one of the biggest, if not the biggest, choir of persons with Parkinson's disease in the world. The areas for being able to perceive music and also to make music have uh, overlap. We now have the tools to uh, be able to answer more specific questions about how it is that music affects the brain and uh, other body systems and uh, therefore we have the incredible opportunity to tailor music, use uh, precision music medicine, if you will, uh, for the purposes of healing. I'm Alex Pantiliat, and I'm an assistant professor of neurology at the Johns Hopkins University School of Medicine. And it's been an absolute thrill for me to uh, co-found and co-direct the Johns Hopkins Center for Music and Medicine. Music is what I would be doing if I weren't doing medicine. I decided that, um, in a sense, medicine was an easier way out <laughs> than the classical. Sometimes. Sometimes. The vision that we have for our Center for Music and Medicine is to bring music and medicine together by making music an integral part of treating illness. This collaborative initiative consists of research activities, clinical care, and education, as well as outreach spread out among a wide range of people from different parts of our healthcare system, the School of Medicine, as well as the university. There is a, a lot of research on music and neurological disease, such as Parkinson's disease, Alzheimer's disease, epilepsy, stroke, uh, rehabilitation. This is not a new idea. In shamanistic cultures, if you can see this, in the shamanistic uh, healers use music. It's, it's part of their regular, their aspirin. <laughs> now we can objectively measure some of these um, impacts that music has on people. So a key part of what we're trying to do is to develop and implement rigorous research studies at the level of Johns Hopkins standards in order to truly advance the field of music medicine. We know music activates a host of different areas of the brain. In fact, some have said that it, mu listening to music, making music activates more parts of the brain than just about any other human activity, which of course is what makes it so complicated to study if everything is getting activated at the same time. It's, it's a whole body experience with uh, um, motor, sensory motor demands. It's a good diet for people suffering from neurodegenerative diseases uh, if they engage in actively making music. It's truly inspiring and powerful to think that music, something that's been around us in our environment forever, something that occurs naturally and uh, is really everywhere, can have demonstrated benefit as a treatment across a wide range of medical conditions.